my wife's on this forum, BX257, here to bring you another 1980s and 90s G.I. Joe tour review. And today I'll be taking a look at the Cobra Heavy Machine Gunner, the 1990 Saw Viper. Now the Saw Viper makes his first color book appearance in the old Marvel comic run of G.I. Joe, in issue number 109, where all we see is a single Saw Viper, treated as an individual. And most infamously, he is responsible for the deaths of four G.I. Joe characters. Doc, Crank Case, Thunder, and Heavy Metal. In the same story, however, he is kind of blamed for the deaths of three more Joes, Quick Kick, Breaker, and Crazy Legs, even though he's technically not responsible for that. I guess he is sort of in the battle, and he certainly does seem to like taking credit for that anyway. Uh, Storm Shadow and Snake Eyes catch up to him in issue number 112, and in the resulting fight, all that's left of this particular Saw Viper is his machine gun. Ouch. It isn't until issue 121 that we see the generic Saw Viper troopers. And that's all we see in his cartoon appearances in Deke Animated's first season episode, United We Stand. That's when we first get to see uh, Saw Vipers in animated form. And I do have to remind you that this is a Halloween special episode, so anything can happen in it. Heck, maybe even General Mills will start selling those monster cereals for the first time in Canada in 30 years. Ooh, spooky. First we'll take a look at the Saw Viper's primary weapon, his heavy machine gun accessory. The machine gun actually has the distinction of being the largest single G.I. Joe gun for a figure. It's almost as tall as he is. The gun has some really nice uh, detail on here. I'm pretty sure that this isn't based on any real world uh, machine gun though. It does come with a removable bipod. You can take it off the front part and actually put it on the, uh, the back part of the, the barrel, but that's really only the, the only place that it'll fit on here. It's a large, sturdy looking uh, bipod, but um, there is one unfortunate thing about the bipod, and that is it's kind of useless. You see, the thing won't kind of rest on it, and that's because the foregrip is longer than the length of the bipod. So this actually kind of gets in the way of trying to stand this thing up. And that's rather unfortunate. Attached to the back end of the machine gun, you can put it on the peg on this side or on this side, and that's the ammo belt, which is also attached to the backpack. That's a really nice bullet detail there. It's actually a very short, uh, a very short ammo belt unfortunately kind of limits the range of how far away that you can outstretch the figure's arm with the gun in it and finally there's the backpack not much you can say about the backpack it has some very odd uh, very odd details on here with these large shell-like things on here. I'm not sure if the gun was supposed to be able to fire those off like a little grenade launcher or something, but uh, there it is. The Saw Viper has a very odd color scheme when I think about it. I mean, it, he does have some really nice colors, which I like, like the dark maroon here and the black, and little pops of color like his, on his visor and on his belt buckle. Because, to me, that's how you do bright colors on a military figure. You do them in moderation. But then you have weird colors like the, um, like the magenta throughout most of his under uniform here. And I think it's very much at odds with his specialty. I'm not sure if that was done on purpose. 
but I mean he has this giant machine gun and you tend to think of machine gunners as being kind of macho and yet the Saw Viper has a very effeminate color scheme. That's very that's a very odd choice. And it's not like Hasbro was going with the, all the wacky colors or bright colors just yet. In 1990 we also have the Range Viper who is done in a very much Cobra color scheme. And when you think of the purple as being kind of non-military, well, you still have the Night Creeper, who is admittedly, yes, a non-military uh, looking figure and color scheme, but still very dark and very within keeping of the character. <laughs> so, just who would be the Saw Viper's chief rival on the G.I. Joe side? I mean, obviously we have guys like the 1989 Rock and Roll, who is closest in year to the Saw Viper, with his crazy Gatling guns. But in the same year as the uh, Saw Viper, we don't really get a machine gunner as, as such, but we do get a Pathfinder who has a really nice uh, machine gun setup here. The original card for the Saw Viper has three very curious errors on it. The first is actually on the file card. You'll notice that they give the acronym for SAW, or the SAW in SAW Viper, as semi-automatic weapons? That makes no sense whatsoever. What that actually should have said was squad automatic weapons, which is the military term for uh, ground support machine guns or portable machine guns. The second error is in the contents list of the card. Not only is there a typo, where it should say bipod, it says biopod, it also mentions two hoses, which never came with the figure. I believe those are copy-pasted from the 1990 Laser Vipers contents list. The Saw Viper is relatively easy to find on the aftermarket, but just not easy to find 100% complete. The giant machine gun he comes with, and even the backpack, are fairly common things to find with the Saw Viper. But like a lot of G.I. Joe figures that come with tiny little bipods, this thing is often missing from the Saw Viper. Another thing which is often missing is also the ammo belt. And on top of whether or not the figure has the ammo belt, you also have to worry about whether or not this thing is broken. The tips are fairly easy to crack off, despite the fact that this is actually a very fairly flexible plastic. I often find the tips actually kind of cracked or split. Split is okay because you can always just re-glue that, but if they're cracked off then it's impossible to attach the backpack to the machine gun. Well, that's all the time I have right now. Please check out my Facebook page for more information and behind the scenes photos for these reviews. Thank you for watching this video and stay tuned for next time to see another 1980s G.I. Joe tour review. See you then!